Ukraine now reports from Honduras the possibility of even limited U.S. involvement still exists. U.S. military exercises here are running full speed ahead. While American troops were being deployed to four training locations far away from battle zones, Honduran warplanes were bombing Nicaraguan positions in response to the Sandinistas placing down landmines as they withdrew toward the border. And as long as Nicaraguan troops remain inside Honduras, the possibility exists that U.S. air support may be used to transport Honduran troops to the border for retaliatory strikes. And I could foresee that happening. Has an official request come through to your knowledge yet? Not to my knowledge. In previous U.S. military exercises staged here in Honduras, U.S. troops were kept clear of the border with Nicaragua by a 20-mile limit. But this time, there is no 20-mile limit. While some of the groups certainly will be moving closer to, to where hostilities have taken place, uh, they're not going to be in any danger area. But there is no specific mile limit. And the reason is clear. With these maneuvers designed to intimidate the Sandinistas, U.S. commanders here continue to insist they're prepared to do anything asked of them. But as American troops carry out this show of force, they are also fully aware of the controversy it's caused back home. To the critics come some harsh words. They're protesting just to protest something, okay? They don't, they don't understand that you can't have communists running free all over the place doing what they want to do. What happens if the United States get attacked by communists, or we leave it open to be attacked by communists? What happens then? Well, there are still many questions about what will happen here in the coming weeks. The only sure bet is the U.S. won't pick up and ship out until the Sandinistas do so first. In Honduras, John Crane, News 